Hello students, today we are going to start with another part within the chapter strategies for the enhancement in food production that is fishery. So first of all we should know what is PC culture. PC culture means catching, processing and selling of fishes that is known as PC culture. And see here actually fishery do not include only the fishes because it is a very um, broad term where it includes lots of other aquatic animals. Okay, so apart from fishes, the other aquatic animals that are included within fishery, they are not only the fishes, it will include fish then some of the molluscus okay some of the mollusca like uh, the pearl okay so pearl industry is also included within fishery next one lobster next one some shrimps okay crabs all of them they are included within fishery okay now we should know that uh, there is one another broad term within which the PC culture or fishery is included that is aquaculture. Aquaculture is the production of both useful aquatic plants and animals that together known as aquaculture. Okay, so first of all we should know that what type of food products are actually taken by those aquatic animals. The aquatic animals, suppose this is one pond, okay, this is one aquatic medium. In that aquatic medium, the fishes, then the pearl, oyster, lobster, shrimps, crabs, everything, every organisms, they are surviving. Obviously, their food products will include some of the aquatic plants. So, aquatic plants will be there. Then the algal bloom, okay, so algae will be also included. Along with that, the phytoplanktons, okay. So phytoplanktons are very much important because this is the very important chief food products is actually taken by the uh, smaller fishes, okay. So the food actually taken by this aquatic animals like the fishes, mollusca, lobster, shrimps and crabs, they are basically the phytoplankton, then the algae and the other aquatic uh, long or some other large aquatic plants. So that is known as aquaculture. Actually aquaculture is a broad term within which fishery is a part or pisciculture is a part. Now to see due to the increase of population, what happened in this fishery or in PC culture, uh, a revolution had come. That means earlier there was no any strategies was taken so that we can increase or enhance the fish production. But uh, only from the aquatic reservoirs, we just collect the fishes. Isn't that? But whenever the population was increasing time to time, the fishes, which is actually naturally can be extracted from the water reservoirs, it is not enough. This is not efficient. So that's why what happened nowadays, lots of strategies are taken for the enhancement of fishery or pisciculture. And that revolution comes after the strategies or uh, the procedures, the scientific procedures to increase or to enhance the fish production that is known as blue revolution. Okay, remember uh, blue revolution means it is the enhancement in the food production by lots of scientific procedures, scientific technologies that is known as uh, blue revolution. Now we need to know that what are the uh, important things we can extract from the fishery, from the aquatic animals apart from the fishes. See the fishes are very much actually a nutrient food product where from where we can get the protein, high rich protein along with that vitamins they are also uh, are rich in the fish flesh. But along with the flesh of fish, 
we can also uh, uh, we can also collect lots of other products okay so first of all we'll see the importance of fishery then only one individual can be attracted towards the fishery or for the production of the fishes so what are the importance first importance that is it provides employment and the income also and this income is not in thousands in lakhs or in millions it provides uh, income and uh, em employment to the farmers and the fishermen next one icing glass so what is icing glass you need to know first of all icing glass is actually one gelatinous product okay so this is one gelatinous product it is extracted from the air bladder you know what is air bladder isn't that it's actually one balloon like structures this is present in the bony fishes so that it can give buoyancy to the fish right so what happened this gelatinous substance icing glass that is actually extracted from the air bladder of some fishes like perch or salmon and it is used for the some cementing uh, substances as well as for uh, for other polishing substances okay so that's is that is the icing glass this is also one very useful product that is generally used for polishing the substances okay next point see this is very much important we from the earlier time also we have heard what is cod liver oil cod liver oil and shark liver oil these two are very much good source of two vitamins one is vitamin a and another is vitamin d so shark liver oil and cod liver oil that is generally taken for actually vitamin a and d okay so that is one very important point next one uh, see the fishes normally the chondrites from the chondrites oils can be extracted like from the sharks and from other aquatic marine fishes oils are extracted and that oil is uh, used for making soaps then paints okay so for the production of soap and paint also this oil is extracted from the fishes next one see shagreen is also used for the polishes now what is shagreen okay shagreen is actually nothing but the outer uh, skeleton outer layer of the sharks okay and we know that the shark is actually a chondritis which have a very hard uh, uh, skeleton that is having the uh, actually a very tough skeleton and that is a type of scale okay so that placoid type of scale is actually very much stick it's very much sharp okay so that is known as the shagreen which is used for polishing the wood wooden substances wooden uh, lots of furnitures they can be actually polished by the skin or the outer scale of the shark that is known as shagreen okay next one see the fish leather is also very much important in the fashion industry so lots of various types of fishes their uh, outer covering is used for making the handbags then the clothes then bag then the shoes okay and it carry a number of um, actually a fashion as well as it can provide us money also and it cost also very a high market value okay so this fish leather which is used for the making of handbags shoes then some pouches etc okay so that is also very much important product okay nothing is actually wasted right everything can be uh, utilized some of the fishes scales some of the fishes skeleton is also used in making some ornaments and some um, uh, ornamental some show pieces we can use in our home as a decorating substance that can also be uh, collected from the skeleton endoskeleton as well as from the exoskeleton of the fishes 
and if something is left out okay we collected uh, suppose the oil then their scales then their bones everything and if something is left then that can be a very good rich high source of um, minerals and vitamins and that is acting as a biofertilizer okay so any leftover part of the fishes they can be crushed and it is used as a good manure okay it's a biofertilizer where no chemicals are used and it's also a very good source of vitamins and other minerals which is also very much useful for the plants okay so there the important see normally we think that only from the fishes we can get the flesh we can take the flesh for only the food isn't that but apart from the food nothing is actually left out every part of the fishes they're used in lots of other areas like making soaps then paints then used for good source of vitamin a and d that is the oil icing glass then shag green which is the outer covering of the shark next one the leather that is the outer products outer covering of the fishes by suppose some of the exposure of chemicals in temperature in pressure it is converted into a leather and that leather is used for the production of or making of uh, shoes then bags tobacco pouches etc so these are the importance of the fishery so this thing is very much important now let us move to the next part After that see some of the fish example because this is going to be very important from your boards as well as need point of view because from here questions are come that find out the odd species maybe three of the species will be given from the freshwater species and one of them that will be from the marine water fishes or maybe uh, they can give you one another uh, question that from the following find out the marine fishes some of the fishes will be given you have to find out the numbers how many of them they are marine from the marine as well as from the freshwater fishes so that's why some of the examples you need to know so let's just see first of all all of these fishes actually they are taken as food only okay so first of all we are dividing the fishes into two categories one is freshwater fishes and another is the marine water fish first one in the freshwater fishes that is labio rohita which we used to say it as rohu okay romas next one lab, uh, labio kalbasu this is also known as kalbasu next one katla 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 catfish Mr. Singhala, this is also one catfish, Singhala. Next one, Clarius betricus, which is known commonly as mangur. And Heteropneustus, Heteropneustus, this is known as singi. Now, these are some of the marine water fishes. Let's just see all of them. Actually, the scientific names are given, but uh, you can remember also their common names. So, Harpodon, this is also known as Bombay duck. Next one, Hilsa, that is the Elish fish. Okay, next one, Anguilla, which is also known as Eel fish. Next one, Stomatius, that is known as Pomfret. Next one, Eluitero Nema, this is also known as Salmon. And Sardinella, this is the Sardin. Okay, so there are some categories of the freshwater fishes and the marine water fishes. Apart from freshwater and marine water fishes, we also have one category that is ornamental fish. Okay, so ornamental fishes, there are lots of fishes are here. They are golden fish or angel fish. Okay, next one um, that is also known as exocita scientific names you need to know. You got it already in first year whenever uh, animal kingdom fish category was there. Na? So in that class, we already have studied that. Angel fish, next one, flying fish. Okay, next one, fighting fish. Okay, so these are some another example of ornamental fishes which is used in the aquarium. Okay, or for just a show or just a 
ornamental pieces, so pieces that we used okay in our home in the another decorative places like offices and another parts of the uh, parts okay so there are the categories uh, you have to remember only just the common name of the freshwater fishes and the marine water fishes and if you can remember just see two or three of the ornamental fishes also okay so let us move to the next part that is the uh, culture how actually the rearing and breeding can take place okay After that, let us move to the next part. Here, we are going to see the two parts together. First one, that is the types of ponds. Okay, so we can take uh, four types of pond. One is breeding pond or we can call it, uh, call it as the tank. But the types of ponds are nursery pond. Next one is rearing pond. And the third one is the stocking pond. Okay. So if in question it is uh, it came like uh, it came in the last HS uh, board's examination uh, HSC board that the types of ponds it was not given in the NCRT book but then also it came so let's just not skip anything so what is it the types of ponds they are the three types nursery pond rearing pond and stocking pond but here actually we are going to discuss two things together one is the culture of fisheries how we can able to increase or enhance the fish production okay so normally uh, what happened whenever in the river bed the fish uh, eggs are laid then maybe this is possible that a lot of egg they cannot get fertilized and they are taken by the predators lots of the eggs they actually washed away okay so that's why what happened the production get normal or production is not adequate to serve the growing population so that's why a technique is developed and this technique is known as hypophysation so what is hypophysation see first of all one fish is taken okay suppose here we are talking about only one fish okay suppose this is the labio rohita okay so from this labio rohita what we can do that from their brain part we just take out the hypothalamus okay so whenever hypothalamus is extracted it is extracted then after that obviously that fish will die that fish we can take it as a food okay and then this hypothalamus which is actually extracted that is crushed that is homogenized then after that it is centrifuged okay and after that the hormone actually is collected from the hypothalamus is GnRH gonadotropin releasing hormone now this gonadotropin releasing hormone is injected into the male and the female fishes okay so in the male and the female fishes it is injected so whenever it is injected then with the help of a needle whenever it is injected then what will happen the amount or the pituitary gland will get activated okay and the amount of FSH to be released from the pituitary gland now will increase okay and after that it will lay the eggs isn't that if it is the female it will lay the egg in high amount okay normally suppose it lay around 1000 egg now it will release 10,000 20,000 amount numbers of eggs and then the males also it will also release the sperms okay in good amount high amount okay so this procedure okay this procedure is known as hypophysation hypophysation is actually the extraction of the hypothalamus from the fishes homogenized and first of all it will be collected suppose that hypothalamus is collected it will be crushed okay in the motor okay in a rotor or motor it is um, first of all crushed then after that it is centrifuged and after that this amount the liquid which is rich in ZNRH that is 
injected into the fishes, male and the female fishes. The females will be given two doses of injection, ZNRH, in the daytime and uh, in the morning time, basically. And in the next day, she will be injected another dose of hormone, that is ZNRH. But the males will be given only one injection. Then, after that, see, whenever we go for this control technique, then this fishes where we have injected this hormone, they should be taken in our superficial, isn't it? So, if we need to maintain or control their breeding, then we need to take it in a tank, isn't that? So, whenever we take it in a tank or in a controlled mechanism then this procedure can increase the production okay increase the production of the fishes in a very large amount or large quantity of products we can able to get okay so after giving the insection the fishes okay the fishes are introduced into the breeding tank okay in 2 is to 1 ratio. Okay, 2 of them, they will be female and 1 is the male. Okay, in 2 is to 1 ratio, they, the females and the males, they are taken in the breeding tank. Obviously, that breeding tank will be larger. So, in the suppose breeding tank, if we have suppose 6 of the female, then in that same tank, 3 of the male should be present. Okay, and that breeding tank should be covered, protected by towards the bottom, it should have one cloth so that the eggs do not shed or they do not get settled down on the bottom so that we are not able to extract properly. Okay, so that's why towards the bottom, we are going to have one net like thing or a cloth, muslin cloth, so that whenever these fishes are taken, okay, they will release the eggs, isn't that? The females will release the eggs and the males, they will release the sperms, isn't that? And then what will happen, these eggs are going to settle on the net or the muslin cloth. And after that, the sperms are going to fertilize the eggs, isn't that? So this way, the fishes, the fishes where we actually have injected the CNRH hormone by a technique called hypophysation, they will be introduced into the breeding tank, right? Then after that, it will be taken in the breeding tank. This breeding tank is also known as Happa, okay? Within which, actually in that bottom, we will have a net or the cloth so that we can able to get the uh, fish eggs, fertilized eggs, right? Then after that, suppose it laid the eggs, right? Suppose the eggs are now get fertilized, okay? Then just by removing that cloth, we can easily separate the eggs. They are get fertilized already, isn't that? And after that, it will be introduced into the glass jar okay in a glass jar the eggs all of the eggs they will be separated outside now after that after some time what we are going to see these eggs are transparent after some time that eggs after some hours a mount like structures they will come out from the eggs okay that means it can uh, actually start its embryogenesis process then after that whenever it for the first time from the egg a one black dot that is actually the mouth start to appear then from that glass jar okay that glass jar need to be very small because 10 thousands 20 thousand one millions of egg can be taken in this much of size of a glass jar okay now after that this glass jar from the glass jar whenever we have seen that from the eggs the mouth starts to come out then it will be given in the nursery okay and in the nursery the small small fishes they will come out okay and that time these fishes they are known as the fries okay f r y fry singular fries smaller okay uh, plural uh, plural 
So this fries, they are taken in the nursery font and they are provided with uh, the food. They are generally zooplankton. Okay, so zooplankton are given. Okay, now this fries will increase its growth, right? So this is the nursery pond where after hatching the from the glass jar, the new offsprings, the young ones of the fishes, they are transferred to the nursery tank. In the nursery tank, what they are going to do, they take the zooplankton and after that in that controlled environment where the temperature, pH, they are all maintained. Okay, they are not provided with the algae or um, the other aquatic plants because they, that type of food products cannot be properly taken by the small fishes and to also maintain the dissolved oxygen level as well as the acidity that is the pH level we will maintain all of them so that the fries they can attain the normal or maximum growth okay so that is known as the nursery pond okay remember that where the fries are taken kept allowed to grow by providing zooplankton in a controlled medium okay so that is known as the nursery tank after that from this nursery tank whenever the fries attain a normal growth suppose in a size of a finger okay this much okay this much then after that they are introduced into another tank that is now known as rearing pond in the rearing pond now the fishes will be uh, around four to six inches long okay so this fishes they will take the food okay enormously they will take the food then in the control medium they will attain coat okay in the trading pond after within two months within two or three months they attain the normal this around this much of size around suppose uh, 10 20 uh, around 10 20 inches long then after that whenever it attained the desirable uh, growth then after that from the rearing pond the fishes are transferred into the stocking pond where the fishes will attain the normal growth which can be sold to the sold in the market okay whenever they attain the size of uh, normal what we take we purchase from the market that size can be attained in the stocking pond so that stocking pond where they completely attain their growth they matured and some of the fishes they will be taken for the next cycle and most of the fishes they will be sold right so this way actually in a controlled medium in a controlled environment the fishes are cultured normally whenever we go for only the catching of the fishes in the wild environment where there is no control or there is no control by men then the production of the fishes naturally in a normal environment they are very less why because most of the time the eggs they can be shed away they are taken by some another fishes okay they are not get fertilized so that's why here a number of eggs get wasted then after that the new young ones that are the fries whenever they are present in a normal suppose one pond in a normal environment then they are also taken by some large fishes predators they catch it okay and along with that due to actually this concept that they are taken by the predators so that's why a number of fries they actually die before their maturity now after that in this rearing point per rearing pond they are providing all of the uh, normal all needed things so that they can attain the growth okay also they are providing all the natural uh, all the natural all the contents actually so that they can attain growth naturally and after that in the stocking pond they are attaining the table size right so this way the wastage will be 
minimum okay no eggs will be taken by the predators okay no fingerlings or no fries will be taken by the predators and they are getting the all nutrient essentials which is needed actually in their respective growth period of time okay so this way we are going to see the culture of the fishery or the culture of the fishes so here we have completed two things you need to know separately uh, in this part we have completed first one one is the artificial hybridization or breeding which is also known as artificial hybridization okay next one second we have already discussed that is the types of pond so in the types of pond you can write the nursing pond then rearing pond and then the stocking pond okay so this two we have completed so we have to know separately in the same uh, lecture actually i have provided you the information of both the pro Uh, method how actually the artificial hybridization is done and the second one that is the types of pond also what is that that types of pond and nursing pond rearing or stocking pond you have to write separately now after that we will see actually two types of cultures okay one is composite fish culture and another is the integrated fish culture so let's just see what are they now after that let us see two types of cultures of the fishes one is composite fish culture and another is composite fish culture and the another is integrated fish culture okay so what is the composite fish culture and integrated fish culture see uh normally what happen that whenever we see the food habit of all the types of fishes then the, it is seen that all of the fishes they actually take the food or they live in the different layers of the pond okay so for your better understanding let's just see this is the pond right this is the surface this is the middle part this is the bottom right now some of the fishes they are actually the surface dwellers because of their mouth part so in case of this fish their mouth part is actually ventral okay they take the food from the surface okay and which have the mouth part which is terminal like this okay then they actually survive in the middle or in the middle layer okay this type of fishes which is living on the surface their mouth part is actually present on the ventral side and the organisms the oh, sorry in the uh, fishes even we are talking about the fishes the fishes which is living on the bottom region they will have the mouth part which is somewhat present on the upper side okay so they will be present somehow uh, like this okay somewhat like this so all of the fishes their mouth part are different if the mouth part is like this okay suppose the mouth part is like this they will be the surface feeder if the mouth part is like this they will be the middle feeder and if it is like this suppose the mouth part is like this okay then this will be known as the that will be a fish which is a bottom dweller so this will be the surface dweller okay that is the middle dweller and the last one this is the bottom dweller okay so uh, whenever we go for suppose basic culture we want a fishery then the production if we need to increase then it is not possible that we can increase the area suppose we have the limited area within that we need to increase the uh, production okay and very often it is actually um, without knowledge actually the farmers and the fishermen they culture the fishes they actually uh, make the fisheries where all the fishes randomly they select and keep it in the uh, keep it in the pond 
then what will happen then suppose the fishes they collected where all the fishes are surface dweller then what will happen all of the fishes will live in the surface they will have competition for food and due to the competition of food some uh, some of the fishes will die okay or some of the fishes will not able to get the food so that's why they will not able to survive so suppose in that region in that same pond we want to increase the production then we can select only three types of fishes okay we have to select only one uh, in that pond same pond we need to select three fishes one have to be a surface feeder only one type of fish they need to be the surface feeder some of the fishes that means only one type one breed which is living on the middle and some of the fishes they will live in the bottom so that there will be no competition okay so there will be no competition for food okay so that we can utilize maximum area okay maximum area of the pond okay and also we can increase the production isn't that increase the production so that is known as the composite fish culture where actually nowadays there are awareness so that uh, number of government and non-governmental non-government NGOs NGOs provide the information that they can uh, take this set of fishes together in one pond suppose Roho, Megala, uh, Katla they can be take, uh, kept together where all the three types of fishes they live in the different stratus different layers of the uh, pond so that there will be no competition for food utilize the maximum area of the uh, pond and also increase the production without uh, without destroying or without hampering their food habit without hampering their uh, regions where they live okay so this is known as the composite fish culture very interesting and also it is uh, very important to know everybody so that we can able to increase the production okay next one is known as integrated fish culture so integrated fish culture is nothing but utilization of suppose this is one crop field okay so this is the crop field where the crops are growing so whenever the crops are in a very uh, suppose if it is the paddy field okay so in that region the paddy fields they need to have the water supply so they need to have uh, this much 30 centimeter of water for about suppose two months right now what can happen that here we are having only the um, only the uh, crop or that paddy field uh, where the paddy is the rice crop that is growing okay if we can do one thing that allow also the fishes in in that crop field in that paddy field okay some of the fishes are like that that they can live also in the big paddy field suppose in this depth suppose within the 30 uh, 30 centimeter depth okay the fishes can survive so in that same paddy field or in that crop field we can allow some of the fishes also to survive so that whenever this fish uh, this crop field they are uh, suppose the crop they are growing also we can able to get the fishes isn't that so here actually for the maximum utilization of area where actually the farmers are uh, doing or they are bring um, they're having the crop field in the paddy field suppose crop in the paddy field then along with the crops different varieties of crop like the uh, rice along with that we can also able to grow the fishes together so what is that that is known as the integrated fish culture so in this integrated fish culture along with along with paddy the fishes can also be grown in the same paddy field or in the same crop field.
okay so this is known as the integrated fish culture so we have seen the two types of uh, fish culture one is composite fish culture and another is the integrated fish culture hope you have understood the whole idea of fishery pc culture aquaculture types of fishes types of marine fishes types of uh, freshwater fishes then ornamental fishes then after that we have seen the hypophysation or artificial breeding of fishes then types of fisheries and after that fish culture where we have discussed composite and the integrated fish culture so hope you have understood this much is needed for your HS second year uh, in the NCRT book you will not get all of this thing in the detail but yes maybe sometime question will be asked okay when it fit is out of syllabus also question will come okay may come so that's why we should not skip anything so that's all about fishy culture hope you have understood in the next video we will complete the strategies for the enhancement in the food production chapter by completing sediculture so the next video will be the last video this is the second last video Hope you have understood. Thank you.